Hey FTC teams, I'm Kyle, and today I want to talk to you about the 2645CR servo made by Hitech. This is a cool little servo, it's a standard size, so the same as your 485 or any of those. Uh, so it's going to fit in the same type mounts, but it's really nice because it's continuous rotation. Um, when you supply a signal other than 1500, it's going to rotate one way or the other without bounds. So this thing is just going to keep rotating all the way around. Um, so this would be a good option. Maybe you've run out of the motor channels that you've been allotted for this year and you need to drive something else continuous, whether it's a, a brush or a wheel or anything like that, then you could use this servo. So say you need a continuous rotation servo for your application, but you need more torque. Well, I've got a good option for you, and that's going to be a servo power gearbox. I've got this little structure here that the servo would fit into, and then you can run an external gear ratio on this structure. Now, there are a limited number of power gearboxes that are FTC legal, um, but this one is going to be completely legal because you're using the factory servo. It's not been modified in any way, and basically you're just going to slide this right into the structure and then gear it externally. So once again, this is right out of the box. So I'm going to jump into the assembly. It's fairly simple and uh, I'll just show you how to put it in there. First off, you need to take out the screw that holds the servo horn on. Once you get that off, just pull the servo horn off and set that to the side. Then you're going to take your servo drop it into the gearbox, and then your SPG400A-CMCR servo kit, we'll throw the part number up for you, is going to have 632 by quarter inch pan head screws. And so you'll take those four pan head screws and run them in to hold the servo in place. Now a little bit about the gearbox while I'm building this. The overall width is 1.32 inches, so it slides real nice right inside of the channel. And then it has a bunch of tapped holes on the sides of it, so you can actually tie that into the channel and make a real solid structure. Uh, it's also a very nice gearbox because it has an, a half inch output shaft, and that output shaft is supported by ball bearings. So this is going to be extremely smooth, and you can put a ton of side load on this, and this shaft is going to be able to support it. The other thing you'll notice is it has a hollow bore. Um, so if you need to run wires or something, down through that hollow bore, you have total access for that. So I've got the servo in place. The next part is going to be, be to build the hub assembly, or the, the hub gear assembly. So you have three parts here. You've got the hub adapter, you've got the spur gear, and then you've got a half inch clamping hub. And basically those parts are going to sandwich together. You can run screws through the hole, uh, through the through holes of the hub adapter, down through the hub gear, and into the half inch clamping hub. Now you may be wondering why don't we just don't put the half inch clamping hub on top of this assembly. Um, the main reason for that is going to be uh, so you have more threads right here to tie into. So if you have a, an arm or a horn or something that you need to put onto this, you're going to have a lot more threads to tie into. It's going to make it more solid. The other reason that I like, um, say you have something that you need to index real quickly. Uh, you could throw a one inch clamping hub around this hub adapter and actually clamp around it instead of using the four holes on the 770 pattern. So that gives you a few mounting options there as well. One tip that I would recommend doing is actually leaving these four screws loose. And then you can slide this on. Basically you're going to align those three parts as you tighten them down. So once you slide it onto the shaft, you can go ahead and snug those up real good. And don't tighten your clamping hub yet because you need to adjust the deck height. It's going to be how high this sets you want it to mesh properly with this pinion gear on the servo. So let's go ahead and slide the pinion gear onto the servo. Then you'll take your factory servo screw and put it back in. There's a little crush washer that comes with the servo. You don't really need that reinstalled. I just use the, the screw and no crush washer. So tighten that down good and tight. And then you'll notice this gear is setting a little bit high right now. 
All you need to do is slide that down until you're happy with it, and then tighten the pinch bolt. Now once you get the pinch bolt tight, and this is located vertically, you need to adjust your gear mesh in between your pinion gear on the servo and the spur gear that it's driving. And so all I do is basically just grab it in one hand and pull those gears together, not real tight, but uh, just kind of snug, and then go through and tighten the four 632 by quarter inch pan head screws. When you adjust the gear mesh properly, you can grab the spur gear and try to move it by hand. There really shouldn't be any free play in there because there's almost zero backlash inside of the servo. And so if you have this tight enough, there really won't be any play in between those two gears externally either. Um, but when you run it, you want to make sure it's not, the, the servo doesn't sound like it's binding or anything like that. So if the servo t sounds terrible when you drive this, you need to make sure to back this off and, and loosen up your gear mesh just a little bit. Um, so a few advantages here. Like I mentioned before, you could put a ton of load on this output shaft and it's not gonna put any load on the servo other than just the rotational torque that it needs to drive that load. Um, if you just had the load straight on the servo, you may break a servo screw or you may mess up the splines. Um, your load's not gonna be nearly as stable, so that's one advantage. The other advantage is gonna be the torque. Um, I grabbed a seven to one ratio. For this assembly, we have from two to one all the way to seven to one ratio. So this assembly here is gonna have seven times the torque that just this servo would have. Um, it is gonna be seven times slower, so keep that in mind. Um, you need to select your gear ratio in order to give you enough speed uh, while increasing that torque. So it's a definitely a give and take there. But uh, let's go ahead and plug this in and check it out. On the way in, I just grabbed the HFP25 servo programmer made by Hitech. Um, it's great for programming, but it's also great for servo testing. You know, if you're out in the field and you need to plug in quickly and, and make sure your servo is running, this is a really good option. Um, I've gone ahead and put this in manual mode. You can see that it's sending roughly a 1500 microsecond signal based on the screen. It's probably a little bit hard to see. But um, so 1500 microseconds, the servo is not moving clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, it's very hard to back drive. That's the other advantage to using this gearbox. Uh, it's, it's essentially seven times harder to back drive the servo since we've geared that down. So if you have an off balance load that's putting a torque on this thing, even when your servo is off, uh, it's gonna have a hard time moving it. You are able to back drive it, so it's not gonna lock into position but it's a lot harder than a regular servo. Um, okay, so I'm gonna decrease the PWM signal and you'll see that it's gonna to start to move really slowly. And then as I continue decreasing, it starts speeding up faster and faster. The 2645 is a really nice and proportional servo. Um, it ramps up speed a lot smoother than some of the other ones like the 1425 CR. Um, so you can get good fine control over your speed. And I'll make it go the other way here. In the same fashion, I'm increasing from 1500 all the way up to 2000 microseconds. And you can hear that it's speeding up. So nice and proportional. Um, let's run this at max speed and see I mean, it's, it's got a lot of torque. You know, I'm having trouble stopping that. I, I can, I say I can. I can't hardly stop it by hand. Um, so tons of torque out of this setup. Uh, the other nice thing about it is you got a servo in here that doesn't really pull a lot of amperage. Um, so even though we're getting a ton more torque, it's not pulling any more amperage by having this gearbox assembly. It's all mechanical. Uh, once again, non-modified servo, nothing's been done to it, it's just bolted in. So, pretty sweet little setup, whether you guys have run out of motor channels and you need some other channel, uh, like a servo channel to run something continuous, uh, or you just want proportional control based on a PWM signal that you send to it. So, check it out, um, we'll list the part numbers on the description down below, and if you have any questions, be sure to email me at tech at servocity.com. 
And if you like the video, go ahead and press the like button. Thank you.